when I first heard about Oshinoko, I had a very visceral reaction. So for the past year, I stream regularly on Twitch, and when the new season of anime comes out, I'll do a whole stream where I review what's coming out and see what I'm interested in, what I feel like I'm going to be watching, uh, and give general recommendations based off the summary and say, well, based off of the information I have, this is what seems interesting to me. I don't stick by that as an iron rule. I keep an eye on what people say about anime that are coming out, and I've changed my mind on things, but... Uh, it's more of me to give an overview of just what is coming out and what my general thoughts are on that, right? Which if you want to see it, twitch.tv slash cold complaints. Anyway, with that though, when I read the original description for Oshino Ko, it was a bit jarring. Now, I'm going to get into what exactly Oshino Ko is about in a moment. I, I do need to preface this with a lot of people don't like giving the premise of the show up because they feel that's a spoiler, which I can see the point of. The first episode of Oshino Ko is an hour and 20 minutes long. It is the length of a feature film. It's a full on movie in its first episode. So I get it. Some people do not consider that to be something you can fully spoil. The point I'm trying to get across here is that I'm going to be discussing what this anime is about because that's the point of a review. If you want to experience this show, it's an amazing anime. Uh, it's something that I, I highly recommend. It's by the creator of uh, the writer of Kaguya-sama, Love is Warm, one of the uh, great comedy animes of the past 10 years. So if you want to check out an anime that's going to blow you away, it's not it's not really a comedy anime. It's a, it's a more of a drama, mystery kind of anime. If you want to experience that without any of this, then go watch that, come back here and listen to me talk and ramble all about the things I'm going to ramble about because we got a lot to discuss here. I just want to give that warning ahead of time here because some people want to go into it fairly blind. So now, but getting on to what this series is actually about, I had original apprehension because the series or the description that I read described the series as being about the main character, Goru, uh, who is a gynecologist in a rural, rural Japanese hospital. One day, I Hoshino, who is this huge pop idol who he is a massive fan of, walks into the building and he realizes that she's been secretly pregnant <laughs> for, for a very long time and she's about to give birth to twins and she wants him to deliver the babies and he promises he's going to help her out he's going to take care of her uh and they're going to keep it all secret because in japan in idol culture especially it's a big no-no especially because she is very very young she is 16 i believe uh, at that time so obviously a lot of problems going into this here but before he can help deliver her babies after work one day he is assaulted by a stalker fan of eyes and murdered and then reawakens as one of her babies. He is reborn Aqua Hoshino along with his uh, twin sister Ruby Hoshino who is also a reincarnated person from his past life. Not going to get into that here but they have a connection. It's really interesting. Anyway and so a whole sequence of events happens from there and that premise though that original premise of some person dying and being reborn as their favorite idol's child. It reminded me a lot of an anime I had heard about from the previous season that I had talked about called My Life as Anukai san's dog. It's an anime that I was flabbergasted at when I saw it in a, in a preview because it's so it's so weird. My Life as Anukisan's Dog is about a guy who one day wakes up and he's his high school crush's little puppy and he gets to see her in compromising situations. That one's a hentai. It's, well, not, not a hentai. It's an ecchi anime. Not exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, very, very different from Oshinoko, which is not any of that. Uh, Oshinoko, as I eventually found out when I gave it a chance and watched it, is a very, very different anime. Uh, much more than what the premise uh, would lead you to believe. Which honestly should be expected from Aka Akasuka, who was the uh, writer again of Oshinoko and Kaguya-sama Love is War. And Kaguya is a brilliant show that handles so many different topics so gracefully. And uh, Oshinoko is really them flexing their writing talents a lot more, their skill with narrative. And we'll get into all that in a little bit here. It actually explores a lot of the weird obsessions that people have with idols and the struggles that idols have in their own personal lives and how difficult the entertainment industry is. And all of that is really tied together by the stellar animation that were brought in and the 
gorgeous character designs. I've talked about this in a few other videos, but anime these days really has a ability to sparkle and, and, and light itself in ways that it just wasn't capable of years ago, you know? Uh, and I, it's one of the biggest achievements in, in recent anime that you, if you look at it over the years, you will see lighting in anime has gotten so much more technically better, right? The way that they're able to uh, put effects on that lighting, make it really glow in different kinds of ways, really shines through in particularly eyes. Eyes. Eye has beautiful eyes with six pointed stars in them, and one of each is passed down to her children. They're not, of course, they're not, they're not really like that in the, in the real world, of course. Uh, they're a symbolization of, like, her magnetic appeal to people and also a little bit of a, a symbol of uh, each kid's connection to their mother in that. There's assuredly a lot of symbolism going on with there and the interpretation of how eyes, starry eyes, play into her characterization and the characterization of her children. But we're not really going to get into that right now because the anime doesn't really touch on it and that's not really what I want to focus on. My main point here is that the way that these eyes change with people's mood, especially with our main character in Aqua, uh, his eyes reflect his emotions and they reflect his, uh, his and his sister's and I's ability to draw people in, to dazzle them. He uses these eyes to translate something about the presence of these characters to other people, and also very beautifully uh, captivating, right? The darkness that comes into Aqua's eyes a lot of times when he's really getting into his, his moods, right? Because this whole story is a revenge plot. Surprise! <laughs> it's not actually all about uh, Aqua and uh, Ruby being the reincarnated children of their idol and them growing up with her. No. I has their children, and her children at the age of four watch her get murdered by a stalker. The stalker that killed Aqua back in his previous life, or at least he assumes so. It's pretty clear that it's the same guy. He kills Ai right in front of her children, and it is the story of how Ruby and Aqua decide to take revenge for their mom. And from that point, the actual plot of Oshinoko comes into, into focus. This story is Aqua getting revenge for his mother and mainly for the person who he saw as his idol for so long. Right away, Aqua deduces that most likely his father had something to do with this, some way that he must be behind this. And so he dedicates his new life to taking revenge, to finding who his father is, and leading a life through the seedy undersides of the Japanese entertainment industry to finally exact his revenge. It's a very compelling tale with, I mean, of course, a lot of twists and turns. This is, again, the guy who wrote Kakiya-sama. This guy knows how to twist and turn a story in a way that's still satisfying, right? That's one of the key things about Kakiya-sama is it's a tease of a relationship between two people, but he's always able to make you feel like you're getting something and you're building on something and something's, it's, uh, it's all coming to a conclusion. It's not going to be a hundred episodes of nothing. You know, you always feel like you're progressing down a path. And Oshinoko is the next evolution of that because it's a murder mystery at this point. It's a reincarnation murder mystery. But with more in it than that, because it's also about how Aqua and Ruby are handling being new people, being the son and the daughter of their favorite idol who is now dead while also trying to find out what their own goals are going to be, how they're going to use their new life, how they handle being in the world that they're in, the entirely different environment that they, they, they are embracing. There are so many angles to look at this story from. It's not a simple murder mystery. There is so much deep character development, not just of the main two characters, but of everyone around them, the people they meet, the child actors who they run into, stream streamers, who they who they join into there's different actors actresses pop idols people they engage with when one of them joins a reality show there's so many things to build off of in this it's such a deep rich world that's incredibly engaging even when it's not focused on the main mystery because that's kind of the key right in making a story like this work you have the main mystery you're building towards that you're always searching for the conclusion, but while you get there, you have a deep, lush path of characters 
and little side stories and different ways of, of thinking about the environments that they're in and telling the stories of the people who live in these actual world environments. You also actually learn more about the Japanese entertainment industry and how dark it can be, which is something that's not unknown, right? There's been anime from Satoshi Kon's uh, Perfect Blue is a great example of the dark sides of the Japanese entertainment industry and how that's only gotten worse, right? If you love Perfect Blue, then this is Oshinoko is right there for you. Uh, there's actually a lot of really good comparisons, and we'll get into other media like Oshinoko in a bit. But that's actually one of the main aspects I want to talk about is Aka as a more experienced writer, as someone who had a hit series that had a, a, a blockbuster anime and live action adaptations in Kaguya-sama. He took the experiences he had there, the people that he met there, the stories that he learned through that, and he used that to really give a more... Uh, clear view of how these things work in Japan these days. Uh, and that's actually really fascinating because Japan has a bad work culture. <laughs> now, the terms good and bad are a bit too uh, simplistic. So it has a very exploitative uh, system. Japan's version of capitalism is all-encompassing in a lot of ways. There's a lot of communal thinking, but there's also in corporations strict, very very demanding capitalism, very demanding jobs with long hours, unpaid overtime, and just soul-sucking labor, where people are forced to work, 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 and not have the opportunity to really enjoy their lives or live comfortably, even with all the work that they put in, right? You see this reflected in a lot of anime these days. Agretzko is a great example of this, the frustrations of a, of a woman office worker, or one that's coming out right now, uh, ZOM 100, the how soul-sucking Japan's workforce is that it's more, it's better to be in a zombie apocalypse than to be working corporate labor in Japan, right? Or Jujutsu Kaisen, one of the best characters in JJK, is Naname, who is who has decided that, you know, being a jujutsu sorcerer and working in a corporate job both suck in their own ways, but at least as a jujutsu sorcerer, you know, you're helping people. <laughs> Even if you might die, you know, at least you're doing something. And it's those kind of things that I find uh, the most interesting. This comes up a lot in Japanese media, but in the entertainment industry, which is such an opaque thing, I think for a lot of Westerners to understand, uh, getting this kind of behind the scenes look and how it affects that form because even in america right in the west we i think a lot of people will know that the entertainment industry is very predatory because there's a high amount of people who want to get into it i myself am a reflection of that i'm a you I, I do youtube videos obviously i like doing youtube videos i want these youtube videos to succeed right and that's me trying to get into a form of the entertainment industry because this is a form of entertainment right there's so much supply of people there's so many people who want to get into that field but there's only so many people who can be successful right there's only so many people who can actually make money off of that and because of that you have a very exploitative form of work and in japan because japan japan's entertainment industry does not have unions right uh, which is very different than in America. In early Hollywood, actually, one of the things that defined early Hollywood is unions. The Actors Guild, the Writers Unions, they have, uh, and then there's IATSE, the Teamsters, everyone around the entertainment industry in America and Hollywood have, have built up layers of protections to protect against the exploitation that still occurs, but forms of protection, right? And forms of people being able to be compensated fairly for what happens, which again, exploitation like that still occurs. That is why currently, as of time of recording, the writers and the Actors Guild are on strike for the first time together in like 60 years, 67 years, I believe I saw, um, at least 60 years. It's been a very long time since anything like this has ever occurred. And, and the reason these things are happening is because of how exploitative the entertainment industry is, even when you have strong labor protections. So look at a place like Japan. And this is actually something that Aka himself brought up. In an interview he did with Anime News Network, he said specifically, I've heard that the entertainment industry in the US and Japan are completely different. In the Japanese entertainment industry today, there is no union for talent and writers. There are no guarantees. 
Auditions are disregarded in casting. Opportunities are given based on the balance of power between companies. And basically, you can't go against the office manager, those sort of things. And they continue to happen. If you, American readers, can enjoy reading Oshinoko with the knowledge of this unique Japanese situation, you may deepen your understanding of this story. It is a intrinsic part of Oshinoko to understand the exploitation and the, the lack of power so many people in the entertainment industry have out there. You see a face on TV. They're not actually making that much money. Ai is one of the biggest pop idols of her era, right? She's a massive idol. Her children are not well off, <laughs> you know? Her, her, there's not a lot of money that's been passed down to her and idols in themselves, the, as the show states, don't make a whole lot of money. There is so many forms of how much wealth you're making doesn't really get generated to the worker. And I'm not gonna go on and on about the excess value of labor in this video about Oshinoko, about anime, but it is something to be aware of and that is a part of this story that the Writers and Actors Guild going on right now is actually something that reflects into Oshinoko and is something that if you enjoy this anime already, you should be aware of that these are the things that we do here to prevent it from being as bad as it is in Japan or Korea as another example. Korea has the whole, I don't know as much about K-pop and all that stuff, but I know that their system is super fucked as well. I, th I think these forms of consciousness are incredibly interesting Right, and, and having a writer with that level of understanding who's made it a priority of ours to speak to and listen to fellow entertainers about their experiences is really engaging. It's actually one of the things I really love about anime and manga, right? One of my favorite manga when I was in high school was Bakuman, which is um, from the same person who brought us Death Note. Uh, it's a story of two boys who, uh, two high school boys trying to get into making manga and how difficult it is, what the behind the scenes of that looks like. And it's fascinating. Getting a peek behind the curtain at all is fascinating, but understanding the level of, of, of work and exploitation that goes into that. And you have people at the top who make it, obviously. You have Oda at the top of everything, you know, who is a supremely wealthy man, but that man works so much that he does not have as much of a personal life as anyone else would think, you know? Even with how many assistants he has. Japanese entertainment industry in and of itself is something that I really enjoy exploring and looking into uh, because it is so very different than anything we see here. Which I think is just something that's very important to consider uh, when you're thinking about an anime like this because I think it's important to engage with what the creator is trying to say with their work. I guess some anime fans don't agree with that because when you point out that some creators are trying to say really gross things, you get really mad about it because they want to interpret things literally. Could make a whole thing about that. We're not going to worry about it today. Anyway, the other things that are great about Oshinoko are its animation, as I've mentioned, but also its opening and ending are like, they're incredible. I've automatically added both of them to my uh, rotation. They're automatically into my playlist. The OP is by Yasobi, who is someone who's done a whole bunch of other uh, anime OPs. They're incredibly talented. I've loved a lot of their work. They're, the OP they did for uh, Beastars Season 2 is also on my playlist, one of my favorites. Uh, but what I really want to bring attention to is the uh, the outro, the, the ending, uh, by, uh, it's called Mephisto by Queen Bee. And whenever you hear the first notes of it starting, because they do a really cool thing where the the ending of the episode will start with the notes playing as the, uh, as the episode is ending. And you're like, oh no, it's ending now, why? It's like a sense of dread I get when I hear it. But, you know, it goes away once you start listening to it because it's such a fucking banger. Uh, it's so, um, it's got a really nice string section to it. Um, highly recommend just to listen to these on their own. I, I listen to them on my own. Um, I love them. And again, I'm someone who normally skips uh, OPs and EDs. Really well done with the music there. Something else I want to point out here is comparisons to other movies and anime. So as I mentioned earlier, a good comparison for Oshinoko is Perfect Blue. If you're someone who enjoyed Perfect Blue, then you really should watch Oshinoko because they have very similar storylines of being driven by the obsession we have around stars and the kind of madness and coldness it can bring you. 
kind of isolation that brings to people where you can't really trust nearly anyone around you and you feel kind of boxed in, right? And there's a lot of other storylines in this that reflect that, not even specifically about idols, about actors, about there's ones about being in, in the drama of a uh, reality show, right? There's a whole section about a character who has to deal with the backlash from a reality show and how that online attention can traumatize you. I'm not going to get into any other details about it, but um, it's very affecting. It's very emotional. And I love what Akka does with their series, how genuine all of their stories feel. You know, the other thing I actually want to bring up here a couple videos ago, I talked about Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, and one of the biggest things, uh, it's a Shah Rukh Khan Bollywood movie, and one of the biggest things I, I brought up there was a movie I highly recommended called Om Shanti Om, uh, which is about a guy who is obsessed with this beautiful actress, and then uh, one day he dies. He's reborn into the family of a famous actor and he must figure out and solve the murder of this beloved actress. It's pretty similar to the plot of Oshidoko actually. Uh, it's really weird. Like in a lot of really specific ways, it's actually pretty similar, which I think is an accident more so than anything else. But it is really weird that Oshinoko and Om Shanti Om, the Shah Rukh Khan classic film, have so much in common. So I guess if you have watched Oshinoko and you're looking for something a little, a little live action adaptation, then watch Om Shanti Om. Don't wait for an actual live action adaptation. Those aren't good. But Om Shanti Om is amazing. Seriously, just watch a Shah Rukh Khan movie. Just get, Bollywood's good. Just trust me. Trust me on this. You gotta trust me, okay? Anyway, this video was a lot, I know, but the main point I want to get across, Oshinoko is an anime that I would really recommend to anyone who's looking for a really good murder mystery, if you're looking for some kind of psychological horror, if you're looking for something that analyzes how our modern obsession with social media and entertainers affects both us as people who enjoy that content and also the people behind the screen who have to live with the uh, pressures of everyday life, both from the people who supposedly are supposed to take care of them and also the people their family their friends and their fans who can sometimes be the most vicious people that dig into their souls what i'm trying to get at here is that oshinoko appeals to a lot of different kinds of people if you're looking for something that is uh, not heavy at times then this may not be the best thing for you because oshinoko does have uh, a, a tendency to get into its drama to be a bit to be a bit much for some people i think so if you're looking for a light anime this is not Kaguya-sama in that way. This is very different tonally, but it does have light moments. It does have a lot of comedy to it. There's a lot of things that are really easy to digest about this. It's also very thoughtful, well animated, perfectly paced. It's actually, it's incredibly well paced and well directed and well realized. I, I'm very impressed with this anime and I'm really excited for season two whenever it comes out. So uh, go watch Oshinoko. It's an incredible anime. And if you want to make sure that America's entertainment industry does not become what Japan's entertainment industry is or you look to see the growth and um, the power of unions grow across the world, as I hope to, uh, then also consider donating to the Entertainment Community uh, Fund. These strike funds can really help support people who are trying to actually get a piece of what they make, right? To see a part of the revenue from the work that they do. You can go and support their efforts and say fuck you to these giant studios. Go to the Entertainment Community Fund, entertainmentcommunity.org. You can also look up Adam Conover actually does a really good amount of uh, discussions on how you can help support people uh, and what you can do to not cross the picket line. So uh, go and support that. Go support you know actors and writers at this time. Support unions, watch Oshinoko, and maybe watch Om Shanti Om afterwards because it's a really good f***ing movie. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have a great day, a great night, or whatever it is you're having. And stay rad.